the disease is a series of steps or well they're actually run in parallel there's oxidative stress inflammatory stress as i said this protein dealing with unwanted protein stress so-called er stress is, is 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 you know starts to deteriorate and the beauty of the, the light therapy the infrared light therapy that we developed or we developed the idea of uh, of using and it's a specific wavelength that's that's first thing to bear in mind um the wavelength we use is around the 10 17 nanometers which actually 20 years ago was thought to do nothing mm. biologically and therefore we actually had to convince a company to make the leds to use it and when the reason we chose 1070 is because of that range of wavelengths um was that it's, it penetrates the brain. The first thing is you, you need to understand when you're a, a drug developer or a therapeutic developer, you, your, ta- your, your therapy has to reach the targets where the problem is in the brain. And the brain is quite obviously, you know, it's a structure underneath a skull and it's, you know, it's quite large and you have to penetrate. Uh, mm. And light, again, you know, people think, uh, how, can, how can light possibly penetrate tissue? But actually the infrared range is can penetrate quite significantly and how the wavelength we've adopted and used and studied for many years is the most penetrating it turns out to be the most penetrating wavelength in the in the infrared range and that's you know a good thing so obviously uh, that suggests that it will get to your target where you where you want to where you want to treat um, a disease and the other important thing this wavelength is the peak wavelength for transmission through water and water makes up 70% of your brain. So once it's in, it actually tra- you know, travels further into the brain because of that, that fact. And that's the reason we chose that wavelength initially. But it, as it turns out, okay, it gets the target, but also it does all the things we want it, uh, a therapy to do in, in the brain. It does you know, pretty much you know everything we, we've just described for the disease, like Alzheimer's. It's an antioxidant anti-inflammatory it actually targets this system that clears unwanted proteins so one of its targets is a is a channel that controls that process in the lymphatic system so that's one of the advantages of 10 this wavelength is actually it targets that uh, as well as the other major target which is the mitochondria so what it does it boosts mitochondrial function which is well known for many of the, the wavelengths of infrared light it boosts atp production it, it boosts a very important thing it, it actually increases a little bit of nitric oxide and this is a gas you might think it's a bit strange a gas nitric oxide but actually nitric oxide is an incredibly important molecule in your in your brain and in your body generally it actually is, actually controls whether your blood vessels dilate or not so what it does, it actually it relaxes a blood vessel and increases your blood flow in the body. And that's what our light, you know, the light therapy does, the infrared light therapy. Many of the wavelengths do this, actually increases a bit of nitric oxide. So locally, your blood supply is much stronger. So you get more blood flow, more oxygen to the brain, which is very important in aging. It's very important in, in disease, brain disease. Because again, in aging, you know your blood supply, you know, starts to wane a bit, so it mm-hmm. doesn't, you don't get so much oxygen into your brain, which is not, not a good thing because the brain neurons need uh, oxygen. Uh, in fact, they use about 35, 40 percent of the total oxygen in your body, because you know they they are very what we call excitable cells. They need to function and be excitable, uh, and you need energy to do that. So ATP and and energy production is incredibly important and fortunately you know like the infrared light uh, therapy does give you that extra blood supply it actually increases oxygenated uh, hemoglobin which is the very important track carrier of oxygen to the you know to your brain uh, and again 1070 seems to be the optimum wavelength for doing that it gives you a longer extent of, of, of oxygenated blood uh, to to your brain, which is all good stuff for all good news for for aging. It's all good news for for age related diseases where where it you know starts to d- deteriorate. Um, so yes, yeah, so so as well as that, one interesting thing also is 
it also in the mitochondria what it does it produces a little bit of what we call reactive oxygen species which most people will say oh that's not a good thing you know this is an oxidative stress molecule um, but actually a little bit of oxidative stress is actually a good thing a little what it does it triggers your body's um, um, system to protect your body so it's what's what we call preconditioning mm-hmm. and the light appears to does it do this is you know i call it sort of photo preconditioning so it does produce a little bit of reactive oxygen species which then causes a transcription of key protective proteins and these are called chaperone proteins so we've shown with our wavelength again in 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 an alzheimer mouse model that you can actually produce you, you increase these chaper- so-called chaperone proteins and these chaperone proteins are really important for protecting your cells from this stress that I, i've talked about all the way through all these stresses uh, so it, it protects against oxidative stress it helps with again with the protein stress the, the misfolded protein stress and also um yeah it processes those 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 misfolded proteins and what you know but the biggest result we found um a number of years ago um what i call a fall off the seat moment was actually treating the cells of our life uh increased the chaperone proteins but at the same time what it did it reduced amyloid one of the key proteins in alzheimer's disease down to by 80 odd percent it was a massive reduction in, in amyloid and it wasn't just the amyloid that you find on the outside of a cell it's actually in the, the key amyloid you need to target inside a cell that's killing the cell ultimately um was reduced by this therapy and also we found the other key pathological protein phosphor tau was again reduced by this treatment and we think it's because of this preconditioning process that the the chaperone proteins are are reducing these unwanted proteins that are in the cell Uh, and that that was obviously a really exciting observation in our preclinical studies that you know that you could have a treatment that would actually reduce the the key pathological proteins within alzheimer's and that led to actually to the first trial you know, actually in humans, you know, the idea that we could actually potentially use it in humans for for treating Alzheimer's disease. Okay, so it's it's a combination of things. It's the oxidant, you know, all the stresses we talked about, it it combats and it also importantly reduces some of the pathological proteins uh, as well. And no side effects. That's again I have to emphasize. 